In 1969, NBC's cult classic sci-fi series Star Trek was cancelled due to low ratings. By the very next year, though, the show had become a cult classic due to widespread syndication deals that exposed the series to millions more viewers. This success would later lead to the development of Star Trek, the motion picture, but in the meantime, fans were starved of that sweet Star Trek content. Mike Mayfield, a high school senior at the time, decided to do something about this, and in 1971 wrote Star Trek, the very first Star Trek video game for the SDS Sigma 7. This was meant to emulate 1962's Space War, but because the Sigma had no graphical display, the game could not be real-time. What resulted was a turn-based strategy game where you precisely choose the movement of your character, where you explore a universe that is generated to be different on each playthrough, expend energy with every movement, and engaged in randomized turn-based combat with enemy Klingons. Anyway, 36 years later, Jack Swift released The Crypts of Despair. In 2007, Jack Swift, aka JTR, creator of the game Death Worm, uploaded the Crypts of Despair to the game maker community. This game is a micro roguelike and features turn-based gameplay where you precisely choose the movement of your character, explore a dungeon that is generated to be different on each playthrough, expend food with every movement, and engage in randomized turn-based combat with the enemy monsters. Upon launching the game, we are greeted with its story, the goal being set as defeating an evil necromancer who lives on level 30 of the crypt, and then we move on to character creation. We begin by choosing our equipment in a minimalist store interface. We have 250 starting money to spend and have to choose what equipment to bring, favoring attack, defense, or various means of navigating the labyrinth. Once done here, we allocate stat points to our character, with defense costing 3 points, damage 2, and HP 1, and then we finally embark on our adventure. In the dungeon, we use the arrow keys to navigate around the interconnected rooms, plundering items and fighting various monsters. There are rats that I couldn't stop seeing as possums, bats, ghosts, slimes, minotaurs, and the absolute bane of my existence, spiders. These guys aren't hard because they're difficult to beat, no no no, they're just really really annoying. You see, as they move around the crypt randomly, they drop spider webs, which randomly stick to your character, causing you to burn through food and making combat far more difficult while you're ensnared. I swear that after my first few playthroughs, I just started taking torches as part of my starting kit because I just could not abide getting stuck in these things. Who needs a shield anyway? Due to pretty low hit point stats, it's not long before we need to heal, and this leaves us with a couple of options. We can hunt around for potions on the ground, which sometimes heal us entire health bars worth of HP, or they might be poison, or blind us, or turn us into a frog. The safer option is to find an alcove and press the X key to rest. This will restore 1 HP per turn, but at the cost of 5 food. It quickly becomes apparent that food is a very valuable resource indeed, as you consume 1 for every single turn you take, and there is no reliable way to get it back, so we just have to scrounge around the dungeon looking for hams on the ground. Initially when playing, I tried to use a pretty balanced, damage-heavy build, with 1 point defense, 3 damage, and 1 HP, but I never got very far with this build, and it was a while before I realized why. You see, unlike regular roguelikes and unlike RPGs in general, the Crypts of Despair does not have an experience system. You don't gain XP from killing enemies, and you don't gain new stats from leveling up. Instead, you occasionally find stat boosts in chests lying around the dungeon, and this is how your character gains power over time. Now, I don't mean to imply that it's entirely useless killing enemies, far from it. The game, though, doesn't come from an abstract XP gain, but instead from any items they drop. Every enemy has a unique drop table, and this makes it very useful to actually pay attention to this stuff. Another thing you'll quickly notice is that, unlike the sprawling randomly generated dungeons you'd expect from larger scale roguelikes, Crypts of Despair's levels always have simple 3x3 grid layouts, with the ladder to the next level always appearing in one of the rooms on the edge. However, this is not devoid of obstacles. In addition to the monster's detail above, there are also pits, which can only be crossed with a rope object, the rope has a slight chance of breaking with every crossing, and doors that must either be unlocked using a key or picked. Picking a lock gives a slim chance of opening the door, I'd guess about 1 in 10 per attempt, and each attempt takes a food, so you really don't want to try it unless you're sure there's not a faster route available. After learning all these systems, and a little bit of trial and error, I developed a new strategy. Rather than focus on fighting like I had in my first builds, the strat I finally landed on was dumping everything into defense. I got the chainmail, the shield, the extra food, and the torches for equipment, and all the defense plus 1 HP and stats. 
Now that I can withstand most casual attacks, I can focus my time in the crypt on number one, finding the exit, and number two, finding enough food to continue onwards. This can be hard to do, as there is only typically one food per floor, and it can sometimes take more than the 75 moves that it grants you to find it. But another tip that I picked up is that the possum enemies drop almost exclusively food, so by avoiding most enemies besides rats and slimes because they're also bad at attacking and they almost never land a hit, I can usually get enough food to get along. Starting on level 11, the walls turn from a saturated green to a dark grey, and new more difficult enemies start appearing, including zombies and redskin minotaurs that I really didn't want to tangle with. More enemies also start spawning in per room, meaning that the spiders here get really, really annoying. This is compounded hugely by the one bug I found in the game, and it's just the worst. Occasionally, when you get stuck in a spider web, the game will just not let you out, and you'll be stuck until either a spider comes along and puts another web beside you, allowing you to burn the web you're in, or just, you know, you starve to death. It was exactly this sort of issue that encouraged me to find new strategies to win the game, and leading to my ultimate mastery of the game through a strategy I like to call... Cheating. Okay, maybe it's not technically cheating, but no, it's basically cheating. You see, Crypts of Despair has a save system, so you can save a run midway through and get back to it later. These save games are meant to be deleted when the character dies, but there's a catch. There is a several second delay between your character dying and the high score table popping up, and if you, in this small gap, press the R key to restart the game, then press Alt to load the game, you can do this before the game is deleted. This basically allows you to save scum the game, meaning that we can now reroll potions until we have one we like, save before difficult rooms, and yes, save and reroll difficult fights on a hit by hit basis. Using this bold new strategy, I was able to fight all the way to level 21, where the walls turn red and some of the rooms get truly overwhelming and more like random object dodging challenges than actual fights. My torch also burned out around this time so I could no longer destroy spider webs, which was super annoying. At long last, though, I finally reached level 30. The necromancer here is hiding somewhere in this level, and we have to find and kill him to unlock the final teleporter out of the crypt. Now, I have to be honest here, I have no idea how this fight would have been possible without save scumming. He can often hit up to 10 points and has pretty high HP as well. Eventually, I just saved after every hit where I didn't also take damage, and I was finally able to kill him, make it to the exit, and win the game, for which I was rewarded with... Nothing. It just showed the high score. It even deleted my save game like I had died. A tiny bit of a letdown since I love a good you win room, but that's okay. I can make my own. The Crypts of Despair is a fun, minimalist roguelike that really makes the most of its limited mechanics to be a really fun experience. The graphics and sound are very reminiscent of old DOS games like Castle of the Winds, and it really suits the stripped down gameplay. The difficulty curve is the main issue, as without cheating I could never get past about level 18, and I could certainly never imagine actually killing the necromancer. But all the same, I had a blast playing this. This is actually my first video so far covering a game that I never encountered as a kid, rather I found this one by looking through the old highest downloaded games from GameMakerGames.com, but I liked covering it a lot. Do you think I did a good job? Let me know in the comments. You can download Crypts of Despair from archive.org. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't yet, I would encourage you to please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for notifications. I'm still trying really hard to grow this channel, and my statistics show that something like 90% of viewers still haven't subscribed, so I would just really appreciate it if you like my content to uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and hey, tell a friend about it. I, you know, what do you have to lose? Nothing. That's what. Nothing. Don't miss.